This video provides an overview of the major topics covered in Chapter 5, Goods and Service Design. Chapter 5 starts out by introducing us to an integrated framework for goods and service design, which involves six major steps. Step 1 involves the development of higher level strategic mission and vision of the company. Step 2 is where strategic and market analysis takes place to develop an understanding of the firm's competitive priorities. This step allows the firm to determine customer expectations and determine the basis upon which it should compete to meet those customer expectations. Next, step three involves developing an attractive customer benefit package to meet the customer expectations identified in the market analysis. Step four contains two sub-steps. Once a customer benefit package is determined, the detailed designs and development of manufactured goods is undertaken for products, and services and service delivery system design is undertaken for services. Next, the process to produce a good is determined or the service encounter is developed for a service. Step five involves the introduction or deployment of the product or service to market. Here, the final product or service or bundle of goods and services is advertised and marketed to customers. Finally, step six involves marketplace evaluation. Here is where feedback in various forms is obtained to assess how the marketplace reacts to the offering. The next concept is about customer-focused design. This involves listening to the voice of the customer to determine customer requirements. What do they want in a particular service? What size of smartphone are customers looking for? How long are customers willing to wait in line for a latte? Integrating the voice of the customer into decisions around design, creation, and marketing of goods and services is known as quality function deployment. QFD can be visually articulated using a house of quality. A house of quality identifies key technical features and the strength of interrelationships between them. This is identified on the roof of the house. For example, how closely related are price and size? The voice of the customer helps determine key requirements they deem to be important, such as taste or nutrition. The center of the house contains a relationship matrix where the strength of relationships between customer requirements and technical features are articulated. For example, how strong is the relationship between price and value, or between nutrition and size? The right side of the house identifies the level of importance customers rate the desired requirements and provides a competitive evaluation of how effectively the proposed product and the competitor product aligns with the customer importance. At the bottom, Technical features are prioritized and compared to how major competitors prioritize the same features. For example, should we emphasize size in our development when our major competitor prioritizes price? Here's an example of a completed house of quality for a pizza. Listening to the voice of the customer has identified four key requirements they're looking for in a pizza. Taste, nutrition, visual appeal, and good value. The technical features identified by the company include price, size, the amount of cheese, the type of topping, and the amount of toppings. The roof shows the relative strength between technical features. Here, the relationship between price and size is very strong, whereas the relationship between size and amount of topping is weak. In the middle, the relationship between customer requirements and technical features are identified. We can see that there is a strong relationship between taste and the type of topping, but a weak relationship between visual appeal and type of topping. On the right, we see customers rate good value as the highest level of importance. The company and a competitor rate the importance high, but not as high as a second competitor rates good value. Finally, at the bottom, the company determines that price and the amount of topping receive the highest development priority, higher than the other competitors. The stars identify where the most attention will be placed in deployment. Here, it's on price, size, and the amount of toppings. The next concept looks at designing manufactured goods and identifies four specific product design activities. The first activity is tolerance design and Taguchi loss. For most manufactured goods, design blueprints specify what we call nominal dimensions along with permissible variation. For example, an O-ring for a valve should be 0.5 cm in diameter with an allowable variation of plus or minus 0.2 cm, giving an acceptable range of between 0.48 and 0.52 centimeters in diameter. The traditional goalpost view identifies the tolerance as literal goalposts 
and any size outside those goalposts or acceptable tolerances result in some sort of monetary loss, which could be from lost sales, warranty support, etc. This implies that output only outside the tolerance is completely unacceptable, and that any output within that range, but that still varies from the nominal of 0.50, incurs no loss. Essentially, the goalpost view is an all-or-nothing view in terms of losses. The Taguchi loss function determines monetary losses to be greater the more the product varies from nominal. So at 0 0.50, no losses would be incurred, but at 0.51 centimeters, which is still within tolerance, losses are still incurred. The second activity is designed for reliability, where reliability is simply the probability that a manufactured good or piece of equipment or system performs its intended function for a stated period of time under specific operating conditions. For example, a Ford F-150 should start reliably, say, between minus 60 and plus 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The third activity is designed for manufacturability. This is the process of designing a product for efficient production at the highest level of quality. This can be achieved through product simplification, which is the process of trying to simplify designs to reduce complexity and cost, and therefore improve productivity, quality, flexibility, and even customer satisfaction. The last activity is design for sustainability. For example, design for environment considers environmental concerns during the design of goods and services and processes and includes practices such as designing for recycling and disassembly. The next concept in Chapter 5 introduces us to service delivery system design, which combines four elements to provide value to customers and create competitive advantage. The first element is facility location and layout being in the right place to attract customers and having an appropriate layout to serve them effectively. Second is the service scape, and this includes all the physical evidence a customer might use to form an impression. The service scape also provides the behavioral setting where the service encounter takes place. So for example, Starbucks makes great efforts into creating an appropriate service scape for customers that includes color tones, comfort level of chairs, the type of music, and even a fireplace. Third is service process and job design. This is the activity of developing an efficient sequence of activities to satisfy both internal and external customer requirements. Here is where we would determine all the tasks and people involved in taking orders, payment, and gathering and presenting product at a McDonald's drive through for example. The last is the technology and information support systems that enable efficient customer service. For example, both McDonald's and Starbucks have mobile applications for ordering, payment, offering discounts, and creating loyalty. The next key concept is service encounter design, which focuses on the interaction, either directly or indirectly, between the service provider and the customer. There are four principal elements in the service encounter design. The first design element is customer contact behavior and skills. This refers to the physical or virtual presence of customers in the service delivery system during a service experience and such systems can be either high contact or low contact systems. An example of a high contact system would be a customer entering a Starbucks and placing an order in person. An example of a low contact system would be where a customer sends an email for technical support from Shopify where they receive a response later. Customer contact for the same service may even vary. For example, you can order your latte from Starbucks by mobile app, in the drive through or in person. The mobile app would have the lowest relative level of customer contact and in person the highest. The second element is service provider selection, development, and empowerment. This is simply hiring the right person, training them appropriately, and giving them authority to make decisions based on what they feel is right, to have control over their work, to take risks, learn from mistakes, and promote change. Third is recognition and reward. It's no surprise that happy, respected, and motivated employees provide great customer service. So properly compensating, recognizing, and providing opportunity for advancement is key to developing a team of motivated employees. The last element is service guarantees and recovery. Inevitably, customers will be unhappy as a result of service upset. A service upset is a problem that a customer have, whether it's real or perceived, with the service delivery system and includes terms such as service failure, error, defect, mistake, and crisis. Now how organizations react to service upset is crucial. One way is to provide a service guarantee, which is a promise to reward and compensate a customer if a service upset occurs during the service experience. 
An example might be a 30 minute pizza delivery promise. If it's not there in 30 minutes, it's free. Then there's the service recovery, which is simply the process of correcting a service upset and satisfying the customer. For example, if Starbucks fails to make your latte to your exact specifications, they will apologize and make you a new one free of charge, no questions asked. If you've ever wondered why a product or service is the way it is, Chapter 5 might give you a sense of the level of thought and effort that goes into the development, delivery, and support of goods and services, as well as the trade-offs involved.